Alright, in this video I want to show you the nuts and bolts, the basics of hypothesis testing with a what's called the traditional method. Um, in a separate video I can show you the basics of hypothesis testing with a p-value method. So this, this video is focusing in on the traditional method. But let me start with this, and I've already started to write some things on this paper here. Right? No matter what type of hypothesis testing you're using, whether it's traditional method or p-value method, <clears throat> there's always going to be a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. And most books I've seen use H sub zero or H naught for your null hypothesis. And depending on the book you're using, you might see uh, H sub one for your alternative hypothesis or H sub A for the alternative hypothesis. They both mean the same thing. But in either case, do you notice that whether you're talking about proportions or mean or standard deviation, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign in it. Right? It always has an equal sign in it, no matter what you're talking about. Whereas the alternative hypothesis may have a less than symbol, a greater than symbol, or a not equal to symbol. Right? But the alternative hypothesis always uses a non equal to symbol. That's pretty important. Now, when are you going to use less than or greater than or not equal to? <clears throat> Depending on the phrasing of the testing that's going on, if you see the words less than, Right, or fewer than or something like that, then it's a less than symbol. If you see more than or greater than, it's this symbol, greater than symbol. And there are some times when, and I can show you an example of it, but there are some times when you use the not equal to symbol. That's when there, there is no mention of less than or no mention of greater than going on, so it's probably not equal to. <clears throat> What's also true about any method of uh, hypothesis testing, and again, this case, this video shows the traditional method, is that the level of significance will be given to you. Right? Level of significance we're going to use as alpha, lowercase a in the Greek alphabet. And so these are just three typical level of significances, but we're not restricted to them. You know, 1%, 5%, or 10%. It could be any one of those or any other type of value. All right? So the level of significance is also important. So let me show you what I mean by um, and this is probably pretty important. I should show you this too. What do I mean by alternative hypothesis? Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Now remember this sheet that I just showed to you here. I told you the alternative hypothesis could be a less than symbol, a greater than symbol, or a not equal to symbol. Well, that's important because it tells us <clears throat> what kind of a testing we're going to do. If the alternative hypothesis has a less than symbol in it, we have a left tail test. If it has a greater than symbol, we have a right tail test. Or if it has the not equal to symbol in it, we have a two tail test. Right? So in this case here, two tails. That's important because in the traditional method, right, in the traditional method, um, we are interested in something called critical values. So let me start writing some things here on a new sheet. All right, so let's talk traditional. method. And the traditional method, <clears throat> as well as the p-value method, um, both of them rely on a test statistic. All right? So let me write that first. Test statistic, all right? which is a z number. And that test statistic is found, right, is found using a bunch of different formulas depending on what you're referring to. If you're talking about proportions, then it's p hat minus little p over the square root of little p times q, right, all over your sample size. Again, that's for proportions. Maybe your test statistic, if you're talking about mean, is x bar minus mu all over, let's see, sigma divided by the square root of n. So both of these are examples of given certain data, you can find a test statistic. But that test statistic, I want you to notice, is we're, we're talking about a z number here, OK? So the traditional method, as well as the p-value method, both use test statistics. But what the traditional method uses that the p-value test does not use is something called critical values. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. Critical values. All right, and again, this is something that's very specific to the traditional method. Okay. 
because the other method in a separate video does not use this at all. Um, what do I mean by critical values? Well, depending on the alpha that you are given, right? Let's say that you are given an alpha of, oh, I don't know, how about um, 10%. So if you're given an alpha of 0.10, okay, the critical value is found this way. The critical value is the level of significance alpha that's in that tail. So if this is a left tail test, all of that 10%, all of that alpha is sitting in that left tail. So you would be required to find the critical value. That is, you'd be, you'd be required to find what is that Z number that corresponds to 10% sitting in the left tail. Well, you could look it up on a table, the normal distribution table, or use Excel, and you'd, fee, you'd find that it's negative 1.28. Or you can go look that up if you want separately. Um, similarly, let's say we are using a right tail test, you know, and we are given an alpha of, oh, I don't know, let's say how about 0.05, right? So all of our level of significance is sitting in this right tail now, and you would be required to go find the Z number that corresponds to that, and that Z number, that critical value Z number, in this case is, um, let's see, I guess that would be 1.645, taking it out to three decimal places because it actually sits in between 1.64 and 1.65. So I'll just cut it right in half, okay? Or, or let me throw one more example at you. How about this one? How about if we were using a two-tail test, all right, a two-tail test, so it looks like this then. I'm doing this quickly here. You can pause this video and back it up if you need to listen to what I'm saying again. <clears throat> so let's see, we're doing a two-tailed test like this example here, and we were given an alpha, right, I'll do it over here, we were given an alpha of uh, 0.01, so that's 1% level of significance. Well, because it's two-tailed, unlike the previous two examples I just showed you, because this is two-tailed, what I have to do is I have to take that 0.01 level of significance and cut it in half. And that's because I want this, I want to share this 0.01 with both of these tails over here, okay? So what's actually sitting over here, I hope you see, is 0.005, and what's sitting in this tail is 0.005 as well, because if you add those up, right, both of them, you get to 0.01. So I actually divided that thing in two, all right? I cut it in half to come up with these areas here. So now let's see the corresponding Z numbers. I hope you see, again, you could look this up if you'd like, is uh, 2 point, uh, what is it, 5.75. Again, it's, it's halfway between 2.57 and 2.58. Um, and since this one's on the other side of my mean, my zero, this is a negative 2.575. Okay, so all of these numbers here, right, all of these numbers here that I'm putting in a box are critical values. That's what these all are. They're critical values. And that's important because, and here's the final thing for traditional method, all right, here's the final thing I want to point out to you, is this. Here's how traditional method works. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you one example and then we'll call it quits here. Let's say that we are using a left tail test. Okay. I had an alpha of, what did we have earlier, maybe 0.10, all right, which means that all of this blue area over here in the left tail is 0.10 and I have a critical value as you saw right a critical value as you saw on the previous sheet this Z number here that corresponds to an area of 0.010 of negative 1.28 now here's the last part ready for this if the test statistic remember that the test statistic using the formula right was to lie right here let's say that our We'll use it as TS for test statistic. Let's say our test statistic actually came out to be, say, something like negative 1.20, right, which is sitting right here, right, on our number line. It's not, I hope you see, that negative 1.20 is not uh, smaller than negative 1.28. In other words, it's not in this shaded region over here, all right? That's important, okay? That's important. If that happens, if our test statistic is not in the critical region, then we do not, let me point this out, right? We do not reject 
the null hypothesis, right? We do not reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Some people say that we fail, right? Fail to reject. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. But let's say, and I'll just finish up with this. Let's say our test statistic actually was, right? Let's say our test statistic actually was, let's say, I don't know, negative 1.38 uh, or something like that, okay? Which, if you were to graph that on the number line, you would see is sitting somewhere over here, okay? So it's something past that negative 1.28. We are actually in the critical region here, right? This is called a critical region shaded area that's why this number here is a critical value all right so if we have a test statistic that puts us into the critical region beyond the critical values uh, less than that critical value in this particular case less than then in that case right if this was the case then I would reject right I would reject the null hypothesis right and in essence if I'm rejecting the null hypothesis I'm actually saying there's enough evidence to support our claim which is in the alternative hypothesis so by rejecting the null hypothesis I am actually doing the opposite which is I'm supporting my alternative hypothesis right with enough evidence so that's how traditional hypotheses testing works